Well, hello there, friends and neighbors. How are you? You'll notice I have a friend here with me today. I'll get to her in just a minute. I have to remind you who I am and what we're here for. My name's Jen Koken. It's 9.45 on a Wednesday morning. Oops, I mean Thursday morning. And today is this week's episode of Java with Jen, Java with Jen, Java with Jen. And today in the neighborhood, I brought my friend Fabian Raphael. Let's take a sip. Bob, should we? Fab, Bob, Fab. Hmm. Dear friend and colleague, I'm so excited to have her here. Fabienne Raphael. Fabienne Raphael. She's from uh, Montreal and uh, a dear friend and colleague who I have been partnering with, uh, masterminding with, referring business back and forth, really going through all the things you go through as a business owner. And the reason I wanted to have her on today is I the blog that I wrote in July, which uh, you know yesterday was the final day of July. It was all about transferring trust to your team, and I gave very specific things to do, things like making sure you share your vision, because if you haven't shared your vision, your team has no idea what song they're dancing to. They think they might be dancing to Michael Jackson, and you're playing the Bee Gees, and their rhythm is off. Okay. That's number one. Number two, you got to give them time to fail. Yes, you have great ideas as a leader, but it's okay to let them try their idea. See what happens. Give them that confidence in themselves to try something and come back to you and say, hey, it worked. Great. Now you have two ways to do the thing or it didn't work so well. All right. Well, how about doing it this way? And then the third thing is really leaning into situational leadership, meaning don't be the same leader all the time. If you need to come up as a coach because they need some input, if you need to give them direction because time is tight, make sure that you have all four of those tools in your tool bells honed and sharpened. But having said all that, the thing that I realized in talking with Fabian, we were on the phone yesterday. I thought, wow, it'd be super cool to have her on here because especially with the Olympics going on. And the first question I said to her is, are you watching the hand, you know, handball because she was on Team Canada and played in the Olympics for handball. So Fabian has a deep personal knowledge of what it takes to build a team, what team dynamics are. She's also a speaker. She works with athletes who want to turn their expertise into great speeches to be able to potentially monetize their business, but mostly get their message out there and lean into what they learned because so many uh, of the, the traits, the skills that a person would learn. I mean, I'm, a, I'm assuming this Fabian, so you can tell me if I'm off base, but I kind of think I'm right. Who knows? I think all the things you learn as a, a member of a team will absolutely transfer over to work. And the problem that I see over and over again is people are promoted without having manager training. So I wanted to come to you today with some end of the month, beginning of the month, we're doing a little bridge, some words of wisdom from Fabienne, like from the horse's mouth, so to speak, because she's been there. She's done that. So Fabienne, welcome to well, Job with Jen. Thanks for having coffee with me this morning, neighbor. Well, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, this conversation is so dear to me because as you know, I spent many years playing team handball and especially on Team Canada, you know, playing an elite sport, you develop a lot of life skills that mm. are transferable into work, into relationships, into any type of endeavor that you embrace in your life afterwards. And, uh, and that's why I'm so dedicated into teaching and sharing the word around what are the best ways to have a winning team and how can we develop trust within team members? Because it's not always easy. No, I'm curious, before we get into how to do that, what would you say you wished you knew then that you know now, now that you've had time to reflect, that would have made your time playing with that team, playing with Team Canada, easier or more fruitful? Oh, wow. I, I love this. Uh, I, think, I think the most, like the best thing that I wish I knew was to be even more curious mm. into knowing everyone better, like the best way possible. Because I've always been an introvert. 
So a little bit retired from, you know, the group, but at the same time, part of the team, but sometimes needed to have my time away from them. And I feel like if I would have been a little bit more curious into questioning people more about their background, about their story, about their side of things, then probably it would have been you know, easier to understand them in certain situations or certain reactions that they've gotten or just the way that I, to embrace and, and, and accept everyone like the best way possible. Yeah, I think that's important too at work, you know, at the office. We don't have to know everything about a person, but I think one of the things that you just said is so critical to understand why they're reacting the way they are, to understand better, oh, that's why they responded that way because I bet it's because of X, Y, or Z. Not that we have to make an assumption, but forming, you don't have to have a best friend like at work, like you need a best friend at home. But I'll tell you, in working with Clifton Strengths and doing employee engagement surveys, they're, one of their top questions that Gallup uses is, do you have a best friend at work? Do you mm -hmm. have somebody you can go to to support you? And I feel like a little bit that's what you're saying is not only would you better understand them, but maybe you'd have somebody to go to the bookstore and read a book together quietly instead of everybody going out to dinner and having a lot. I mean, that's, I would be that person, you know, cause I'm really an introvert too. Nobody believes me, but it's true. And I'd be the one curled up in the chair in front of the fireplace with you, not saying a word, drinking our coffee and, and reading our books mm -hmm. for hours. And then maybe we'd say a few words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When, when we talk about like not necessarily being best friends, I think it's, it's true that you don't have to be best friends with everyone on your team, but what I feel is very crucial is that everyone knows what their role is and what value they bring to the team and how important their role is for them to be able to accomplish that goal and to be a winning team. So I feel like if I, if I recall like all the things that all the, the teams that I was in, uh, either when I was playing for Team Canada or my local team or when I played it. <coughs> Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, I don't think that everyone was my best friend, but because we had that common goal in mind, because I knew what everyone was able to bring to the table, because I trusted the ability of all the players that were on my team to bring us closer to the goal. Then when we were playing, it was never a question to me like, would I pass her the ball or not? Or <laughs> should I trust her to be part of this team to win this game or whatsoever? I think it's uh, it's important to know exactly like who who is on your team, what their goal is, what they bring to the table, and reunite all of that in order to get to that big goal of ours because otherwise it's not possible. That's why we always say we win as a team, we lose as a team. Yeah, it's funny. I was thinking of music and I was thinking of an orchestra that mm -hmm. each, you know, section in the orchestra. Uh, I was a band geek. I played French horn for years. You know, if you didn't, you, the horn section has their music. French horn specifically have their music, which is distinct from violin, which is distinct from all the other parts of the orchestra. When everybody knows their part and when you know everybody knows their part and when you know everybody's practiced, Mm -hmm. So they can play their part as well as they possibly can. Then it's a harmony. Mm -hmm. And when somebody hasn't practiced as much as you have and the notes are off or they're behind or whatever it is, it brings down the whole orchestra. So I, I hear that both. And I think when we're thinking about working, then what I hear you saying is, number one, you don't have to be friends with everybody, but understanding their mindset, where they come from. I also hear you say, know your, know your teammates, know their position, what they're accountable for. Are, is there a goalie in handball? No, there's a, what are the positions in handball? I don't even know. What are the positions in handball? Yeah, there's a goalie. And there then is? There are, yeah, three backs and two wings and one person in the center. In French, it's pivot, but I can't recall the word in English. <laughs> I don't, what was it in French? En français? Pivot. Pivot. I yes. don't know. The person in the middle of the December defenders. Uh, center? Center. That's what we would call. I mean, I played rugby, so that's okay. what we would call it. Oh, you did? Yeah, I was captain of my rugby team that. in college. Wow. I only played because all the cute boys played. And I used to make the girls scrimmage with the guys. They hated me. They hated Canada me. just won silver in rugby. Oh, <gasps> They did? 
Where's yeah. I try, you know, I don't have cable, so I'm not watching, but I wanted to see USA uh, rugby. I didn't know. Do you know what the USA come close? I don't know. Oh, you just know about no. Canada, Canadians. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. We're going to do this on air. Cause I think this is hilarious. I saw Ryan Reynolds on some TV show. Uh, and he was like, stop saying you're going to Canada. We don't want you. <laughs> it's like, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. The Canadians are supposed to be nice. What happened? But back to our originally scheduled programming. So is there anything else as a, let's say as a new leader of a team, you know, so we've established, you don't have to be friends, but you do have to know each other well. You have to know each other's roles. Uh, we, and that was one of your biggest lessons is knowing each other better. We have to understand our expectations from each other. Um, what do you think is the most important element in working effectively as a team? Is it that or is it something else? I would say not to believe the story in your head. Ooh, that's a good one. Say more about that. Because working in a team, of course, like there's, there's chatter, there are people talking. And sometimes you hear something and you don't even know if what is heard is what was actually said. Yeah. And um, yeah, working in a team, you got to be willing to go for the uncomfortable conversations in order to clear the air and in order to make sure that you keep going in the right headspace. <laughs> And that you're not influenced by some type of things that you heard or you yeah. thought you heard that yeah. someone would have said and all that stuff. So I feel like communication is, a, is also a big thing. Not only, you know, if you've heard something and you're not sure to clear the air, but also the way you do it with others. So coming back to knowing exactly how everyone loves to communicate. And, you know, what's the best way to let them know about something? Do you, do you understand or do you appreciate feedback? And how do you appreciate me giving you feedback? Or if there's something like, should we schedule something right now, now, and just go into heat and just uh, talk about it? Or you need some days, two, three days to let things settle and rethink and re talk about it eventually. So all that stuff. I think that Sometimes we believe stuff in our heads and uh, it could become bigger and bigger and bigger the longest the time that you let, pa let pass by. But, um, but the solution would be like a big, uncomfortable, sometimes long, sometimes short conversation just to solve the problem. Yeah, I love that for a couple of reasons. You know, I'm all about fact versus fiction. Like what, let's just look at what are the facts versus a story in our head. If, if people haven't read The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, the first two agreements are don't take things personally and don't make assumptions. Really important to continue as humans, as whether we're at work or in home life, right? Either, either way. But the uncomfortable conversation, it's something I get asked about all the time. You know, I don't know how to talk about that. And I agree with you that we need to keep the space clean, hygienic, you know, as a team, whether in the office again or on the court, do I say on the court as a ham handball? Okay. Yeah. Or on the court. I mean, if you're an athlete, things are going quick. So yes, keeping that space clean allows you to be able to have all those nuances, but at work, same thing. If there's tension built up, it's usually because the story in your head is bigger than it, than it really is. I don't think, I know for a fact, most people are not trained how to have a hard conversation. Business school doesn't train business owners or anyone else how to manage people. They train them how to own businesses. So do you have a tip for how to start a hard conversation? Ooh, oh my God. I'm trying to think well, if I have a tip. Yeah. You know? I, I would say, I would say that, uh, first of all, just be genuine and come from a place of, um, you want things to get better. Yeah. So I feel like you have to call to come in a calm space, like not with um, high energy or high intensity mm -hmm. of frustration. Yeah. Just check in with yourself first and be calm before addressing anything. And of course, the energy that's coming out of that conversation will be received as something that's important, but something that's 
dear to you. And also that's something that's genuine. Instead of the person feeling judged or attacked, they'll probably be more open to it. Yeah, that's really good. I think um, when you talked about how do you want feedback? How does someone else want feedback? I think the first piece is taking a breath, giving yourself a timeout to just allow the emotions to dissipate mm -hmm. and maybe, you know, do some, this is really good to like calm down the vagus nerve, tapping on your collarbones, you know, tapping on your head, literally tapping on the side of your hand just to get the emotions to calm down. Because what's happening when those emotions are rising so high, the amygdala is getting involved because the brain feels threatened. When we're able to calm those emotions down, we got the prefrontal cortex and we're able to logically think about things. And I know for myself, when I've had that situation, when I'm able to think about it over a few days, what I thought was so big, it's kind of like a blip. Yeah. And maybe I don't say anything because maybe it's my stuff and maybe that would make that person feel really bad and it won't go back and change anything. And maybe at some point I'll bring it up, but you don't have to say, you don't have to like deal with it all. Take some time for yourself to calm down first. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's been fabulous having Fabienne on here this morning in, in the neighborhood with a little coffee with Java with Jen. Java with Jen, Java with Jen, Java with Jen. <sighs> Another episode with me, Jen Koken, your executive leadership coach for women in STEM who are looking to lead with more authority, influence, and impact. Generally, I am here live every Wednesday, 9.45 a.m. Day late, not so much a dollar short, because I've had the pleasure of having Fabian Raphael in the neighborhood, uh, executive speaking coach, former uh, Olympian, Olympic athlete, and uh, all around good egg. Just one of my favorite people, by the way. Any last words for you, Fabian? Let's do great things. Mm, I love that. As a team. Yeah. As a team, let's do great yeah. things. Beautiful. All right, friends. Ciao, ciao for now. Ciao.